Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys are staying healthy, staying happy, staying motivated. Thank you guys for tuning in. I made a couple of videos, everyone. So if you guys like these videos, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe. It would really help out. But anyway, guys, we're going to get right into it. Top 10 reasons why you should mo avoid moving to Florida. Top 10 reasons. And I want to get your guys' input, what you guys think about it. Um, the reasons are pretty good, and I have some data, some graphs to back it up. So we're going to get right into it, guys. Before we get into it, one last thing. I am a licensed and insured realtor here in South Florida. So if you're looking to buy or sell, my number is 305-988-2230. My name is Joel Vargas, and I would love to work with each and every one of you. So yeah, guys, so let's get right into it. So getting right into it, everybody, the first reason is going to be the high pricing in homes right now. Again, high pricing. So I have two different graphs or two different uh, sets of information. One that's a graph, one that's uh, talking about data and statistics. So I'm going to put up the first graph here for you guys so you guys can take a look. But in, in this specific graph or data, uh, we have here that in 2023, the median prices were $410,000. Again, I'm going to say that again. In this year, sorry, last year, 2023, the median prices were $410,000, guys, which is an incredible amount for a median price. I mean, guys, starter families, single, single, single men, single women, people that are professionals, $410,000. It's an insane, insane amount of money. Um, I have this other data set talking about this year, 2024, $10,000. Go back to when the 2008 bubble, the housing crisis, a $400,000 or $500,000 house was buying you a 3,000 square foot home. A $400,000 to $500,000 house. Guys, there are townhomes going for $400,000 right now, and I'm not making this up. I am a licensed and insured realtor. I do real estate every single day. These are real facts. A $500,000 house, guys, I was in Sunrise, Florida a couple of days ago doing some showings. Guys, a $500,000 house gets you a 15, 15 to 1,800 square foot home, not a very big home, not upgraded, not updated, maybe not even in the best area, an ideal area. Guys, it's crazy right now. It's crazy. So in 2023, the median was 410000 The other information that I'm going to put up here, it's actually some statistics. In 2024... Florida home prices were up 3.9% compared to last year. And in this year, they're selling for $400,000. So obviously, we have different numbers, but I like to use uh, both information sets so we can get an overall idea. But so just to keep it in layman terms for everybody, to keep it simple, Florida home prices are ranging between $400,000 to $410,000. Let's just call it for about $400,000 just to keep it simple. But anyway, guys, $400,000 for a home. Guys, there are professionals, people that make 60, 80 grand, 100 grand. To be able to afford a $400,000 to $500,000 house, that is, with today's interest rate, it is a high monthly payment, guys. It makes it uh, so that pretty much all your uh, income is going to go to your housing, just your housing. We're not talking about anything else, just to pay your mortgage. Guys, it's 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 insane. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. Um and I feel bad right now for a lot of people that do, that have savings, uh, that have the, they have a certain amount of down payment. But then when they go look at a house, they're like, wow, I'm going to pull all this money down just so I can live in this. It's just a really tough situation, guys. I mean, realistically, the houses that sold for $500,000 in 2008, 2009 housing crisis right now, they're about double that. So if you guys thought the 2008 prices were crazy, we're about double that, just to be clear with you guys, okay? All right, and touching base of, of the expensive mortgage, obviously that's part of a, a living expense or part of the cost of owning a home is going to be your, your monthly payment. But on top of that, everybody, reason number two, we're going to get right into it, is the overall cost of living here has increased to an amount that is ridiculous. I mentioned this the other day. Um, I went to get a stamp, a notary stamp uh, for a document, and I ended up paying $10 for just a stamp. Now, I know what you guys are going to say, $10, not a big deal, yada, yada, yada. But guys, $10 for a stamp? For something that takes two seconds? I mean, I know I'm someone who, who I am a frugal individual, but man, it, it just goes to show the overall situation. A little baby stamp costs $10, but you know what? 
I live in a condo, guys. My electric bill went from being like $80 a month to almost double $140, $150. The gas and lean prices are crazy right now. You go to any grocery store, primarily the, the bigger ones, obviously, Trader Joe's, shout out to Trader Joe's, is a great place to, for savings and good food. But overall, guys, if you go eat Trader Joe's, uh, Publix, uh, Windex, see all the major Kroger's, all these major places that people go shopping, all these prices are going up, guys. The cost of living is going up, electricity is going up, gasoline is going up, food is going up, uh, cell phone bills is going up. I mean, it's really crazy. You also have guys talking about the cost of living, including the mortgage. If you live in a townhome, for the most part, guys, I keep saying this, I keep bringing this, this up, but where I live now, I was paying about 370, sorry, 330 in just HOA payments about four years ago. My HOA right now is about $640. So I'm about double of what I was paying when I first bought my place. And with what I'm paying in HOA and mortgage, had I known that I was going to be paying this much in an HOA, I would have just bought a house because I, I make what at the time I could have bought a house with what I make, what I pay right now in mortgage and HOA. So it just goes to show that everything is going up, guys. Even the costs that you think are sometimes set, HOAs are going up all throughout South Florida. It's getting ridiculous at this point. And what do you get for an HOA? You know what I get for $600, let's just call it $650. What, did I, what do I get for $650? Well, we had an assessment to redo the buildings. The buildings got repainted. The paint on the buildings is now coming off. The elevators in all the buildings where I live at, they're all old, they all, they're all outdated. They need constant, literally constant maintenance. Once a month, you have people coming out to make, uh, give maintenance because they're always breaking down. I get access to a small gym, probably about an 800 square foot gym. I get access to a clubhouse that food isn't free. I got to pay out of pocket. Um, they do a good job at landscape maintenance and cutting grass, but we have a golf course that I don't use. I mean, guys, this is just so much expenses that I, as a home, as a condo owner, am paying. That it's just and this and six hundred and six hundred and 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 forty dollars, guys. To be honest with you, it's not too bad. And when I tell people this, some people look at me like I'm crazy. It is normal. I'm gonna say this. It is normal for you to pay anywhere from six hundred to nine hundred dollars in HOA. I'm gonna say that again. Some people don't believe this when I say it. It is normal to pay $600 to $900 in a month, just in a monthly HOAs, guys. Think about what I'm telling you. You're, that's not including your mortgage payment for the actual property, the actual unit itself. And what does this tell me? Just this overall situation, guys. Everywhere you look at, you try to save money one way, which is now damn near impossible because just everything is expensive. The only way to save money at this point is to literally cut out the things that you don't need and uh, that you don't want, sorry, and just focus on things you need. Food, gasoline, you need a cell phone, um, but entertainment, alcohol, all this other shit stuff, guys, it's gonna be it's at a point where a lot of people gotta reconsider their situation so they can reduce their, their, their debt, how much they're paying in interest payments and just increase their savings. But the main thing is to cut down debt. If you can cut down debt, guys, to have for three-fourths of what you're at right now, Remember, the whole point is to cut down debt and to save, to have, to have money for opportunities or even have enough money for one day to buy a house. And listen to what I said for one day, right? When is that day going to come, guys? I mean, it's just a sad situation. It's a tough situation all around, guys. It's, it's really difficult. So let's get back to it. Reason number three not to move to, to Florida, especially South Florida, is going to be congestion and traffic. I live in, uh, I'm sure you guys know this by now, but I live in Davie, Florida. That's where I reside. That's where I live in. Um, I'm very centrally located, so I'm literally like five minutes away from the 595 and all the major highways, I-75, all this, and Turnpike. But either way, guys, either way, when rush hour comes, which I want to say rush hour is anywhere from starting at 4 o'clock, let's say 4.30 to about 7 o'clock, you do not want to be on the highways at this time, guys. If you work 30 minutes away, let's just say 30 minutes away, which is an average commute, 20 to 30 minutes, let's say, and you're going or leaving work at rush hour, guys, that commute can take double the time. And then some people, so some people might not be a big deal, right? But I just want to state something. Guys, our most valuable asset is time. We want to spend as, as little of it on things that are unimportant and spend as most of it as we can things that are important, family, friends, loved ones, 
cherish memories. There are people that leave their jobs because they say, I can't handle the hour commute when I leave work, or I can't handle the hour commute when I go to work in the mornings because the traffic is so bad. And we already have an issue with traffic, guys. They are expanding the highways, but you know these projects to expand these highways, it takes years, everybody. Literally years and years and years. So you're just in a constant uh, high-strung, stressed out, Oh, and hopefully there's no car accidents because there's a car accident and traffic comes to a dead stop. It's just a constant reminding that South Florida is just getting way too full. And I live in Davie, guys. I would never, I, I, I'm going to say this clearly, I will never move to Miami or even close to that area because that area is just crazy. I used to love Coral Gables. If you guys are watching this, look up Coral Gables. It's, a, it's, an old, it's an older city. The streets are older. Everything is older, but it's a beautiful city. But when it comes down to traffic and rush hour, that is probably the worst, one of the worst cities you want to be in when tra traffic out, how it hits. It's, 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 it's ridiculous, guys. And I'm not making this up. You can talk to people that live in Miami or, or commute to Miami rush hour. They'll tell you. They'll tell you it absolutely sucks, everybody. All right, reason number four is interest rates. Interest rates right now, obviously, interest rates are something that it's not just city-specific. It's something that it's overall. But as you guys know, interest rates are high right now. So just buying a home right now in general, it's just going to be much more expensive. You know, that $300,000 home you're buying, which I don't even, I don't even know if you can buy a $300,000 home at this point, but a single family, but that home that you're buying, the expenses are so freaking high because the interest rates, right? The interest rates are ridiculous right now. They're not at an all time high, just to be clear, but they are at a 20 year high right now. And, and that's across the board, everybody. If you have debt, you're paying high interest rates for that debt. There are, and I always say, there are people that are win, that do win in down times. The people that are winning that is, are people that have money in a high interest savings account, yielding and reaping the benefits, right? It's not all doom and gloom. But for the people that are struggling, if you have debt, it's the worst, it's, it's the worst, it's a very bad time to have debt right now. And I hope that if you guys are having that you're being smart with it, you're utilizing 0% interest rate, interest payments, you're utilizing, uh, you know, very beneficial terms. And you have, and I have to be careful when I say that. I'm not telling you to put everything on a credit card with very good terms because what happens is you just, you increase your overall debt to income ratio, income to debt ratio. You increase that. You don't want to increase your debt in regards to your income because that means you have less money for yourself and less money to save. And remember people, we need to all be saving to take advantage of the times when the opportunities arise. Opportunities are not cheap, nor are they easy, but they do come, and each, every one of us is represented with an opportunity at a certain times in our lives. I don't care what anybody says, you might be going through a hard time, an opportunity always presents itself. You can have, you can be two, one of two people. The person that sees no opportunities is constantly complaining, or the person that sees issues and problems and finds solutions where people can benefit. Remember guys, you can be, you can be a great businessman and be a fair person and an honest, an ethical person. Just because you're a good, great businessman doesn't mean that you have to scam people or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. On to the next one, lifestyle. Region number five is gonna be a lifestyle. The lifestyle in South Florida, and again, I talk specifically South Florida, in Florida, because usually that's where most people wanna live. I mean, you have other parts. Tampa's actually popping right now. Not popping in like a bubble way, but popping is, uh, it's, a, it's a very hot area, Tampa, uh, Jacksonville, Orlando, these are all the areas that are pretty hot right now, but for the most part, people usually want to come down to South Florida, Miami. That's where that's the, that's where I would say a lot of attention is given to with the lifestyle, guys. The lifestyle here, if you're someone who isn't making realistically over like 80K, you don't really get to enjoy the lifestyle here, guys. You don't really get to enjoy the lifestyle. You don't really get to... Uh, to enjoy the, the benefits of living in Florida, having fun and, and, and being outside, having off time. The lifestyle here, guys, everybody, that, that's what I, I, and I want to say that's what attracts people to, uh, that's what attracts people to Florida is going to be the lifestyle, obviously, especially Miami. They see the flashy car, they see the women, they see all this wealth. Now people want to just come in and they think it's automatic. No, guys, there's a lot of people struggling here. You know, and if you're not having, a, if you're not making a good amount of money, you don't really get to enjoy anything out here because you're just constantly working to just survive, you know? So lifestyle was great, 
but it really benefits those who have the money to be able to have that lifestyle, okay? So reason number six is going to be our seasons. Now, personally, I love hot weather. Hot weather to me does not bother me. I love the, uh, the, uh, I love being in the sun. I love sweating. I love everything about hot weather. It does not bother me for one second. Um, but there are people who don't like the hot and humid weather. There are people who prefer to be in a more cooler climate. Um, we do have hurricanes. This is a common thing in, in South, especially in South Florida and in Florida in general, but more specifically in South Florida. We have hurricanes. Hurricanes are dangerous. They can cause a lot of damage. And when a hurricane comes around, pretty much everything shuts down. Um, so it's not to say, yeah, I love the weather, but the weather doesn't come perfect, right? It has its good and bad, and bad being that hurricanes. And for those of you who know or don't know, hurricanes in the past couple of years are getting stronger every, every single year. So this is just something we have to deal with. It's not to say that you can't survive through a hurricane. Obviously, I'm, I'm, we're all still here, people who are watching this in, in South Florida, but just something to keep in mind that we do deal with hurricanes on a, not a constant basis, but pretty consistently, you know, every year you gotta, hopefully you, you, we hope that we don't get hit by any hurricanes. So um, we have severe thunderstorms. So we have thunderstorms. Usually, you know, those get, can get pretty scary. They get pretty intense. Um, and again, these are just little things, guys. It's just to tell you, yeah, we have, I love, this, like right now it's a beautiful day. It's hot and sunny, but it does not come with its cost, guys. We are not immune to mother nature here. We get hit with thunder, really bad thunderstorms. We get hit with hurricanes. So these are just things to consider. Um, but I'm here at a beautiful view right now. And I just want to show you guys the view. So you guys take a look. You know, I'm giving you guys all these reasons to not move here, right? But, man, when it's beautiful out here, it sure is beautiful. You know? So... But yeah, guys, let's keep it going. Let's keep it moving. Reason number eight. Um, reason number eight, everybody, and this is something I've noticed as I become an adult from a child to an adult. Obviously, when you're a kid, and then once you get to high school, you're not in the real world. You don't really get to see people and see how people are in this in this in this environment. And I get it, guys. There's people, difficult people in all in all parts of life, in all places of life. There are difficult people every corner you look at. But something that I do always tell people is that I, I get the sense that not everybody, right? I'm not saying everybody, but a good amount of people in South Florida are very unhappy. There's a lot of miserable people here. And I'm not saying this in a pessimistic way. It's just, just from my experience. I've been living here all my life. I'm 31 years old right now. And um, people, man, people can be very difficult. People can be very rude. Everybody out here is, and I get it, everybody's watching out for themselves, but the hospitality here, guys, there's certain places that still offer great hospitality. There's certain people that are genuinely nice people. But for the most part, guys, at this point, and this is not a complaint, this is just me stating, I'm used to it. I'm used to people being rude. And I just try to, you know, I just try to always uh, understand their viewpoint. They work jobs that they hate. They have bills that they they feel that they have their for, they have to pay to to maintain. They make very little money. They're in a constant vicious cycle. And I know what you guys are gonna say. Well, it's on it's on them to make change. I hear you. They can make changes. They chose their life to a certain extent, right? Things happen in life. But for the most part, guys, I mean, I know people have choices and they can work hard and make changes. But at the end of the day, the more unhappy and miserable people you have, it just affects the overall society, the communities. It makes you just want to stay home. You know, there's a lot of people that have guns now. Every time, like, for example, spring break happens, they actually banned spring breakers in Miami, Miami Beach. Um, I think they also did with for Lauderdale. But long story short, spring break was becoming so bad down here, guys, because it was getting so violent. These, 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 these college kids were coming down, completely trashing the beaches. In Miami specifically, there was, like, a shooting every spring break. There were usually multiple shootings. People were dying and it's, um, you definitely got to watch your back here, guys. I mean, I'm not saying that you're unsafe everywhere you go, but you got to be smart. You got to be aware of your surroundings here. You know, there's a lot of people that are unhappy that have guns and, and unfortunately, like there are still safe communities and everything, but 
you know, when you go out to a public establishment, restaurant, theater, or anything like that, entertainment plaza, you need to really be aware of your surroundings here, guys, because we're at a time right now where just there's so much mental uh, mental illnesses, uh, un, uh, uh, people are, are depressed, and just, just people here overall, guys, I, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's difficult to do business here, and, and I'm a realtor, right, and I find that even realtors, just difficult for no reason, you know, I love what I do, and I, I genuinely want to make people happy, and I, and I love when people are happy, especially with my services, but at the end of the day, guys, people are difficult to be with, or to deal with, I'm not talking about my clients specifically, I'm just talking overall in general, you know? And this is just something you need to understand, like, if you go up north, not in South Florida, I'm saying, but like to another state, there's places that are more hospitable that I've noticed. You know, there's people, there, there are a-holes everywhere you go, but like Virginia, for example, North Carolina, it's more low, it's more it's low pace. It's not as stressed out. It's, they're more, they're, I just find them, they're more hospitable, they're kinder, they're there to help. It's just a, a a slower pace of living and sometimes we all need that that's why going to, into the woods and which we don't really have woods here in south florida going into the woods or be connect, uh, unconnecting from the real world is super beneficial to everybody that lives in south florida because we're just so high strung high paced here people drive fast there's accidents all the time you got traffic the increased cost of living nobody can afford a home eviction you see all these things bundled together can create a very easy and unhappy environment so that's uh, you know, that's something that that uh, you know, we're uh, we're, we're dealing with right now. Um, going on to the next reason, um, and this is right now currently in South Florida, is that it might for those of you looking to invest in rental properties, I would say maybe look into other areas of investments. I know there's people that really want to do rental properties, but if you buy anything right now, guys, you're gonna be paying so much money for it, a high price for it, regardless, even if it needs work. You can get, you still can get good deals. I'm not saying that if you have cash on hand, but for the most part, guys, for those of you looking to invest and buy rental properties, people are barely able to afford rent right now. If you buy something that's expensive and expect to charge an expensive rent in a medium to low income area, right? Um, it might not be the smartest investment. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just something as a realtor telling you, you know, you don't want to buy something expensive and charge all this expensive pricing because you're gonna have trouble finding tenants, qualified tenants, because a good amount of people out here are struggling, okay? So that's just something to, uh, to uh, just to think about. So we're going to reason number nine at this point. Um, and I wanna just touch base on this. In South Florida, in Florida, Miami especially, we have, we are ranked number four. This was a, this was a data given as of 2022, um, but we are ranked number four in fraud in the US you have 1,400 reports per 1,400 reports per 100,000 residents. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys this. I am not a genius. I am definitely not the smartest person around. I'm someone who just, who, I want to say I'm a pretty average person. I'm not anything special. But the reason I tell you that is, I'm also not an idiot, right? I'm also not. I'm not a a dumbass, and I. <laughs> Uh, excuse my French when I say that, but I'm just an average person who I, I would say, yeah, I got a pretty level headed on things. And even with all that being said, guys, I've been scammed and defrauded twice in my life. I'm not going to get into the details, but I've lost thousands of dollars, you know, trusting in people that I thought could be trustworthy. I've also invested in my own certain blood family that have scammed me for thousands of dollars, never contacting me again. So I know what it feels like to get scammed, guys, and I lost I lost thousands, and it really hurt. It wasn't money that was life changing per se, but when you talk about thousands of dollars at a time, it may not be life changing money, but it's money that helps you live day to day, right? And the amount that I lost, guys, was very hurtful. Um, that's why I have to work hard. I mean, just like everybody else, I, nothing comes easy in my life. You've seen these videos. I love what I do. Don't get me wrong. But I make mistakes just like everybody else. I'm a human being, you know? And I trust people and I shouldn't uh, be trusting them. Um, but anyway, besides my personal experience, I do also know people that have been scammed and defrauded in different ways. There's a lot of scams that go on with rent rental properties where they'll have the property for rent. You pay them a deposit, they disappear. That happens a lot, guys, especially like on Craigslist. 
And again, I made a video about this the other day. That's why you use a realtor. You you listen to me. If you're going to rent, use a realtor. Because you know that a realtor is going to be doing everything how it's supposed to be done. You know, we're not going to be worrying about somebody scamming you. Don't be so hard-headed, people. Using a realtor right now for buying and renting is free. You don't pay them anything. The landlord pays them. The seller pays them. That's a whole other topic for another day, but to avoid being scammed with rentals, just use a realtor. Now, if you don't have any credit and you don't have three months deposit, you might not be able to use a realtor because most of these listings that we have on the MLS require a decent credit and they require three months deposit, which is first month, last month, and security. But anyway, a lot of scams that go on with rental properties, uh, especially on like Craigslist, so be very aware when you're renting on those websites, guys. I tell all my clients that. Um, there's a lot of identity theft that goes on here. Be very aware of your information, guys. Sign up for uh, identity monitoring uh, services. There's a lot of companies. There's so much fraud going on, guys, that I get letters all the time from, like, banks and different companies that I pay monthly in it that because they got a data, a data leak, a data breach, and they offer free credit monitoring services, you know, and they offer, like, a million-dollar insurance if you ever so. If you have those letters, I know sometimes we get busy with life. We might not think it's important, but a lot of those things are free, guys, especially now because most of the companies that we invest in as in consumers or we pay or we do business with, they pretty much most of the time they get breached because of, you know, hackers and whatnot, and they offer free monitoring services. So, and if you don't have any of those, if another companies you do business with have been breached and they don't offer that, you should sign up for one, guys. They're really cheap. It's just a peace of mind. Identity theft can ruin your life for a long time, guys. It makes it very difficult to use your credit ever again because it destroys it, right? I mean, that's one part of identity theft. They can take your money. I mean, it's the list goes on. So that's reason number nine, just because I'm a scam and fraud there is, and I can attest to that. I've been scammed and frauded twice, defrauded and twice in my life, lost thousands of dollars. So just like it, just like I tell you, if I can be successful in life, any of you can be successful. There's nothing special about me except for my, the only difference that separates the successful from the unsuccessful is the hard, the, hard the, 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 the discipline and the consistency. A lot of people are smart. A lot of people know what they're, what they're talking about, but there's a lot of people who aren't disciplined and consistent. That's why they don't become successful. And in the opposite way, the same way that I can become successful and you can become successful is that, uh, is on the opposite way, the same way I can get scammed and defrauded, you can also get scammed and defrauded. So that's just something to, uh, that's just something to um, to think about, guys. Don't ever think the people that are getting scammed and defrauded are idiots, they're morons. This happens every single day and to the people you would never think about. And the people that do do this frauding and scamming are people that you would never think would ever do that to you. My piece of advice to each and every one of you, if you're going to invest in anything in this life, I have learned the hard way and through loss of thousands of dollars, I no longer invest in other people. I stopped doing that the second time I got scammed and defrauded. I can laugh at it now, but when it happened, it wasn't funny, man. It was really, it was terrible. But I learned the second time that I got my money taken from me or scammed and defrauded, that I will no longer invest in people. I will only invest in myself because I can trust in myself. And if I'm investing in myself, it's because there's a good reason. And it's because I believe in myself to be able to achieve what it is I'm going after. Okay, so just a piece of advice, do not invest in anybody else. Obviously, there's going to be exceptions. You guys are going to still do it. Some of you guys, close family members and stuff like that, I hear you. But for the most part, guys, just don't invest in anybody else. Invest in yourself, into your own future, into your own business, to your own efforts. Remember that, guys, you know. I don't talk about, I don't talk about, oh, you should, you can. Can I talk about real world experiences of people that I know and myself, guys? So just be smart. Every single day, you know. Um, and going to the last reason, guys. And we touched upon this early in this video, but it seems that living in South Florida is no longer fun. It's not fun to be here. It benefits those who make uh, an over average amount. And I'm talking usually about 100000 or over. And why do I say it's not fun here? Is because everything is so freaking expensive. That you're two days off on the weekend, a lot of times you get to you go Monday through Friday, you work your butt off 40 plus hours a week. You get to Saturday, you go out Friday night, um, you wake up Saturday, you enjoy Saturday, 
Then you go to Sunday. Sunday's usually a, a laid back day, a, re a relaxing day. But what I'm trying to get at, guys, is the reality that most people in South Florida and in, and in the United States, really, is they work Monday through Friday. They enjoy the two days off. And, and in Florida, the situation is even harder because we have elevated and increased amounts of cost of living here. That's just what it is, you know? So, you know, a lot of times you come, a lot of people move down here, but you're paying, right now you're paying so much in your mortgage and in taxes and insurance and, and your escrow is going up every year. Your, your, your monthly HOA is going up. That's just for you to, that's just your monthly payment for you to stay in your place, right? So, no, so the bank doesn't come take your home. And then you include the, other, the additional cost of living, the necessities, gasoline, food, cell phone. I mean, if you want to have a Netflix account, I don't know what Netflix charge is not maybe 15 bucks, but it just puts us in a situation where if you are the type that likes to go out and enjoy an experience, it makes it much more difficult. You know, if you're a homebody, then it's not super bad. But either way, even if you're a homebody, even if you don't go out, you still got to pay for gas. You still got to pay for food. Electri electricity, you know, your, 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 your uh, cell phone bill, like, you know, so a lot of people move down here with the idea. It's like all oh, the weather and it's just always fun and sunny. And it's like, you know, being a Floridian here from all of my life, I can tell you it's not always sunshine and rainbows, everybody. Being in South Florida, you better be ready to hustle, you know, and you have two options. Well, three options. You could be someone who's comes into a uh, an inheritance, right, and you're set, which realistically probably most of us, me, you, don't have that. Um, and your second option is to be, be comfortable with a weekly or bi-weekly check from your employer, just enough for you to survive, make payments, but you don't really get to where you want to get to financially. You don't, you, you live an average, I want to say an average life, and hey, listen, it's not knocking anybody average, making average income. If you're happy, don't listen to anything I'm saying. If you're happy, that's the goal. Be happy. You see, if you're happy with where you're at, that is amazing. And I'm proud of you for, for being able to be happy and having peace and, and joy in your life. But if you're not, you know, but for the most part, guys, there are people that work Monday through Friday who aren't happy and they feel stuck. I've been there. It's the worst feeling. That brings depression, misery. You know, but that's the reality. Come weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday comes. Oh, we have a great day. We had a great Saturday, Sunday comes. We got to recoup, back to work on Monday. So that's your second option. Your third option, which is, which is more difficult, obviously, in the first, and more difficult in the second is you invest time into yourself when you come home from your 9 to 5 or whatever it is, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, you invest time in creating something else. And I know I'm gonna get, oh, I got kids and I got all these responses. I, I, I understand, right? What did I say earlier? You can be the person who looks for opportunities, right? And be positive and find solutions to problems. You can be someone that's negative and is always un miserable and unhappy. What's, what, what do you wanna be, guys, right? You're seeing me in this camera, just push you see me. And I, and I love what I do and I enjoy real estate. My life is not easy. My, my checks are never secure. I don't get a secure check every month. I got to bust my butt to make money, especially here in South Florida. And there's times that I'm extremely stressed out. It's never easy. But you know what? I left a nine to five to better my life because I was tired of being unhappy and miserable. It's been very stressful. The past two years have been very challenging, very difficult. And I feel just, just now I'm starting to really get the hang of things, you know? I mean, I've always done real estate, but I've always had a job on top of the real estate. But right now, I'm all in real estate, guys. This is what I do every single day. And I genuinely love what I do. It's hard. It's exhausting. I get stressed out. I deal with a lot of personalities, people. I deal with people, but that's my job. I solve problems every single day. I show homes every single day. But what I'm trying to get at, guys, is that through the struggle, through the hard work, the consistency, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's harder than a nine to five and a stable income. It's much harder than that. It's much more, uh, you're, it's, uh, it's much more, uh, it's not secure. I don't get a secure check every Friday, you know, of the month or whatever. But man, the ability to have joy and peace in my life, it's, it's well worth it. Even though 
you know, even though maybe there's certain days or certain months that might not go my way, that's part of life, guys. But with all that being said, everybody, I genuinely wish each and every one of you happiness. I hope that every one of you guys finds the happiness and finds joy and finds peace in your life. I gave you top 10 reasons. I hope there, there were good reasons for you. If you guys have any comments, questions, comment below. Let me know what you guys think, if you agree or disagree. And lastly, everybody, I am a licensed and insured realtor here in South Florida. I do real estate every day. This is my full-time job. I eat, breathe, and live real estate. I love what I do. I love my clients. And I would love to work with you, each and every one of you. If you guys are ever looking to buy or sell a home, my name is Joe L. Vargas. My number is 305-988-2230. And I wish you guys to stay healthy, stay happy, stay motivated. Comment below. Subscribe. Call me. Text me. Whatever you guys want. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. Have a great day.